Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Nelson for Catholic News Break. Here's what's happening this week in the news. We begin from the Vatican. Pope Benedict XVI met with participants of the People of the Traveling Show Pilgrimage, which was sponsored by the Pontifical Council for Migrants and Travelers. The Pope praised circuses, street musicians, clowns, magicians, and other interim performers, not only for bringing people joy, but also for being an example of hard work, sacrifice, strong families, and respect between the generations with their traditional lifestyle. The pilgrimage participants, who came from 15 countries, paraded down the main boulevard leading to St. Peter's Square. Inside the Vatican Audience Hall, there was a short performance by jugglers, clowns, and acrobats. The Pope told the estimated 8,000 people gathered that they are called to give witness to the values that are part of their tradition, love for the family, tenderness toward children, attention to those with disabilities, care for the sick, and the valuing of the aged with their wealth of experience. The Pope personally greeted several of the performers. One of the clowns gave him a nativity scene set under a circus tent. Pope Benedict said the values and sacrifices that performers traditionally have embodied, like courage, generosity, and a focus on the needs of the family, are not always appreciated in modern society, but they have molded generations of circus workers. In other news from the Vatican, the Vatican launched Pope Benedict XVI's official Twitter account this week at a press conference. Rome Reports looks at other Catholic leaders who have embraced social media. The moment was historic as a Pope sent out his first ever tweet. A year and a half later, Benedict XVI will have his own account on the social networking site Twitter, a monumental occasion within the virtual world. But within the Vatican, the Pope is not the first to embrace this new technology. Among the most popular Catholic leaders in cyberspace is Cardinal Timothy Dolan, Archbishop of New York. He has over 61,500 followers and uses Twitter frequently to share photos and articles about his latest events. He also shows off his great sense of humor. Yet despite the popularity among American cardinals, Italian Cardinal Gianfranco Ravasi also stands out. The prefect of the Pontifical Council for Culture has 26,000 followers and often tweets in various languages. Another popular Italian is Angelo Scola, Patriarch of Milan. His latest tweet uses the hashtag Advent, which kicks off Sunday, and offers advice on how to spend the time. He even has his own webpage, angeloscola.it. Meanwhile, Boston Cardinal Sean O'Malley has his own blog, which he updates weekly, and his own Twitter account to share photos and articles with his 6,700 followers. The Archbishop of Barcelona, Cardinal Luis Martinez Sistac, is new to social networking and follows only 22 people, among them the Catalonia Cristiana Weekly. He has over 1,000 followers and growing. Still, other princes of the church are sticking to Facebook. Newly created Cardinal Luis Antonio Tagle, Archbishop of Manila, has over 100,000 likes on his Facebook profile. With Benedict XVI slated to join cyberspace, it is likely that he will top the rankings in the coming days. One other note from the Vatican in an address to participants attending a plenary session of the Pontifical Council for Justice and Peace. Pope Benedict XVI said that the world authority envisioned by two popes as a way to ensure global peace and justice would not be a superpower, but primarily a moral force with limited jurisdiction. Pope Benedict recalled that Blessed John XXIII had called for the construction of a world community with an authority that would serve the common good of the human family. The Pope also cited his own 2009 encyclical, Caritas in Veritate, in which he called for a true world political authority to ensure international cooperation, peace, and environmental protection. He said that the Church offers principles of reflection, criteria of judgment, and practical guidelines for such an organization, but no concrete legal or political recommendations. He said the proposed body would not be dominated by a few, but rather by a moral force. The plenary session was scheduled to meet for three days to discuss the theme of political authority and global governance. The Council's president, Cardinal Peter Turkson, told Vatican Radio that the agenda would include the topic of global financial governance as a response to the world financial crisis. In October 2011, the Council called for establishment of a central world bank to regulate the global financial industry and the international money supply. 
And finally in the news from around the country, at a recent news conference in Wheeling, West Virginia, Bishop Michael Bransfield announced that his Diocese of Wheeling, Charleston, has established a new matching grant to help address the grief and anguish of the poor, especially the children living in poverty. The bishop said the diocese will provide matching grants for parishes, schools, and agencies in the diocese that wish to implement local programs and outreach to address issues he identified in a pastoral letter he issued in November. Pastoral guidelines for the fund will be distributed in December. Bishop Ransfield said he wanted to offer children and families in poverty a compassionate message of joy and hope. The bishop spoke about his pastoral letter, Sunday, setting children free, loosening the bonds of poverty in West Virginia. He noted that West Virginia experiences higher incidence of low birth weight and infant mortality than the national average. He said that the child death rate is higher in West Virginia, as is the percentage of children approved for free and reduced price school meals. The state also ranks higher than the national average in child abuse, children with poor oral health, and in the teen birth rate. He said these statistics show that helping the children of the state will take a wide variety of approaches. Well, that is all the information we have for you at this time. Please stay with Catholic TV for more Catholic news. Until then, I'm Kevin Nelson, and I'll see you next time on Catholic News Break.